Hello everybody and welcome to another Ascalon Catacombs Explorable video. This time we're going to be looking at the difficult encounter in... What path was it? I've already forgotten. This is Colossus Rumblers if I am not too wrong. Yeah, no, it definitely is Colossus Rumblers. Um, getting to this area is fine. If you're probably watching this video, you might be having trouble here. We certainly had a lot of problems here. Um, what I've done is I've changed it up a little bit here though. Uh, we're going to see a successful run first time and then we're going to see some failed runs and hopefully try to look at how we could have improved those failed runs or at least make a demonstrate a point about how difficult these things can be compared to how easy they can be. Um, do you want to explain the general concept behind the room? Mike? Generally, these two things on the map that you can see, these two shields, are collecting essence from the tombs so that the, uh, the NPC can turn us into ghosts so that we can go undercover or something. Mm-hmm. But you have to defend these things, they will take damage, and uh, the longer you leave them up, the, the percentage power in the top right corner will go up to 100%. If it hits 100%, you win, done. Great. Good job. Yeah. But if one of them goes down, the percentage thing will go up slower. But that does mean that one of them can die safely, and you'll have one less to defend. So you kind of have to make a decision in this. It's defense, you've got two locations. It's kind of nice to have both up for as long as possible so you can get the percents up, but only one of them needs to survive to gather the, the spectral essence or whatever it is, this Asura ones from uh, this area. Uh, the main thing that will be happening here is in the previous video you saw we had six burrows to defeat um, and the next burrow spawned after we defeated the first one. This time around, burrows are gonna spawn whether you destroy them or not. They're just gonna keep coming and get this, they will never end. Well, they will end eventually, but you need to destroy about 20 of the damn things before you can find the end. The only reason they do end, I believe, is because ArenaNet didn't expect players to be able to defeat that many of them. Um, so really, you've got two. You, you've got a choice you can make. Uh, you can go full out defense and just try and destroy as many burrows as possible, but accept the fact that lots are going to spawn and you're going to have lots of enemies, but focus mainly on defending the collectors. Or you can go all out offense and try and defeat as many uh, burrows as you possibly can. Uh, what's our setup here, Mike, and, and why did it work? I think your best bet is to go out all out offense. If you go all out defense, eventually you're going to get overrun no matter what. But um, we do kind of split a little bit. We have at one point something gets attacked, and uh, one of our guardians splits off to try and de defend that, I think. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, we've just got a lot of damage, a lot of power, because these are buildings. Remember, conditions aren't going to work on buildings, so go power specs and just damage them as much as possible you see here we've got we've got you with the you fire a great sword which is aiding me because i'm still in condition spec stuff and uh, the fire a great sword does a lot of power damage just straight up damage and it's going to aid me it's going to make me more useful yeah so as you can see also one of the collectors has gone down we've completely ignored it we kept it up for as long as we thought was was reasonable it has gone down but the other collector is on full health we've kept that side of the room nice and clear. Um, you will see a massive difference on this uh, depending on how fast you can defeat these burrows. The whole thing with Gravelings and this whole burrow and, and the breeder mechanics is it all moves exponentially because if you take a long time to kill the burrows more and more stuff is going to come, more burrows are going to come and it's just going to quickly spiral out of control. But if you can defeat the burrows very quickly then it's reasonably easy actually which is why I yes think that and this is the way we managed to successfully do it. Uh, keeping the burrows in check is definitely the easier way of completing this. You can try and go full defense. Um, you will eventually get overrun without a doubt, but the nice thing about this encounter as opposed to the Hodgkin's encounter is that there is it is going to end after a certain time limit. You don't actually, in theory, need to kill anything on this, but I would highly advise you do, otherwise you're going to get overwhelmed really quickly. But uh, the tactic here... Um, we tried many different things, we tried different splits, we tried saying, right, let's have three people defending, two dealing with burrows. Um, elementalists, as, as we mentioned before, are reasonably good with taking these out, but there are many other builds you can use uh, to, to knock them out on different classes. Um, but in the end, the main way we, we ended up doing this was we stayed for 99% of the time as a large group. We, we were all kind of together, we decided exactly what order we were going to take the burrows out in. Familiarise yourself, re-watch this video if you have to, uh, what burrows spawn and in what order and where 
where in the room. Make sure everybody understands wh what order they are spawning in. And as long as your team can move together in a pack fast enough to destroy the burrows as new ones spawn, you should be okay. Um, but you will see uh, a setup we have uh, in, a, in a moment where we do this again, but we don't have that much power. And you'll see just from a very small difference how quickly you can get overrun, which is why I feel like a lot of people will end up failing on, on this. Again, you can see us pinging Shit, there. Uh, Go on. Yeah, make sure you ping the target so everyone in the group knows what's going on, what to focus. And on that note, remember that these bros will spawn big gravelings as well as just the hatchlings. So be wary of breeders, champion breeders, veteran breeders. I don't know what they're called. They are breeders, and those breeders will spawn more enemies for you to deal with. Make sure you've got at least somebody dealing with the breeders as well. And uh, the, other, the other types of gravelings as well. What one thing to mention about breeders actually is dealing with them isn't necessarily nuking them down. Uh, control is fantastic against them. They do dust, as as Mike uh, described before. You can watch when they're about to spawn things, and if you do have at least two people with some kind of knockback, uh, you can keep them in check. You don't necessarily need to kill them that quickly, but if you're good at watching their tails and being able to interrupt them as they're trying to spawn more things on, they're they're almost non-entities on the battlefield if they're not spawning more enemies. You just need to keep hounding them. You need to make sure they're not. Remember, spawned. that's that's knockbacks, stuns, blowouts, days, blind, blind works as well. Oh, does it? That's interesting. Um, so yeah, there you go. Basically, as you can see here, the percentage is still going up. Finally, we have defeated all the burrows. That's how many burrows you have to break. I think the idea is they're continuously spawning all the way into 100%, but we were quite quick here. Um, and you can be too, uh, if you are fast enough taking these things out. Um, don't forget, we're not even max level here, so you might have an easier time uh, when everybody's fully traded up. Almost as early, yeah. This is balanced for level 80, definitely, but we managed to do this at uh, about level 50, so I think we did a good job. Yeah, I'm quite impressed with that. I think that's pretty good. Um, so yeah, you, you will complete it. You'll get your chest. You'll get your waypoint. Looks pretty simple on that first run, uh, but I do feel like it's important to show a failed run here, um, just because it, it, it feels like a completely different game. No one, I think maybe one of us went down in that previous encounter. Um, but on this one, it's just a very different story. You will see us doing some other interesting things here um, that could be quite fun. Mike actually wasn't on this run here that did fail. Uh, what you'll watch here is we've got two Guardians. Um, I believe it's skill 4 on the staff. They're pumping might into me as an Elementalist. A very nice, uh, if you do have a Guardian, just throw that out there on the staff. Why not, just as you're starting. Uh, as you can see, just before the stuff begins to spawn, uh, we get our ads up. I use my healing skill there, which gives me might. Might seem a bit useless, but it's actually worth it. Just for that extra thing. I think that puts me all the way up to 25 stacks. Meteor shower lasts so long you can precast it. And look at how quickly that burrow goes down. It is really, really handy. If you're not getting times similar to that, don't worry. Because that first one always goes down pretty quick. And it was because of the might we were giving ourselves. Uh, but you'll see, we're still killing stuff pretty quick. And this, as you're seeing right now, this is a failed run. So we have a lot of power. But um, you, as you watch, it, it might not mean everything when you get into the heat of battle if you can't actually uh, deal with the stuff that comes out. So yeah, as you can see, we're about to split, I believe, on this run. I'm going to take out this burrow here nice and quickly while the rest of the team, as you can see, is going to another one because these two spawn in about the same amount of time as one another. I start getting hit, but as I said before, um, on any kind of cl castle class, keep moving and you'll be fine. Uh, but as you can see my team, I nuked out this one. I'm pretty sure all of the burrows have the same amount of health as, as one another. Uh, we have fairly sure. We're not entirely positive on that, but just assume that it's it's probably about the same amount of health. Yeah, but as you can see, the rest of our team isn't particularly good at taking out the burrows at this point, and this one is still on tons of health, uh, as opposed to the previous run where this one was down at this point as well. So it's only a tiny bit slower. We're only just behind killing the burrows as we were in the previous run. But now, this one near the door, near the entrance is up, and we haven't been able to nuke out instantly. Stuff is starting to pour out of it. You can see the rest of the team is moving further north. They're trying to get rid of a burrow that's about to spawn uh, near the collector that we're trying to save. We're not necessarily saying, by the way, that the Northwest Collector is the best one to defend. It's just the one we settled on. You could try the Southwest one. Um, we, we haven't really experimented enough, but maybe if you have been trying to do the Southeastern one, sorry. Um, if you have been trying to do the Southeastern one and it's been failing, try the Northwestern. Uh, we found that one uh, to be a little bit easier. As you can see, Southwest is about to drop, but we're all up at, at Northeast. Um, a few, I wouldn't say advanced tactics, but you see there's quite a few burrows here. And these are going to be pouring out a lot of gravelings. If you can grab aggro on these things, try and drag the gravelings on top of the burrow so that when you're attacking it, even if you haven't got AoE, even if you're a melee class, 
or just using melee weapons because there is no melee class. If you're using melee weapons, they're going to cleave through several things. If you've got everything clumped up on top of that burrow, you're going to be dealing with the burrow, you're going to be dealing with all the ads, you're going to be dealing with the, the breeders, the howlers, the scavengers. Just try and group things on top of the burrows if you can. It'll save you quite a lot of heartache. Yeah. Uh, one other thing as well I feel like mentioning, it wasn't a winning strategy for us in the end, but there are several locations around the room from which you can position yourself, you can stand, you can jump up on, and none of these enemies can hit you. You are basically invincible. It means you cannot damage the enemies, but uh, you can still take out the burrows from range. So me as an elementalist, I could get any of those on the far side of the room from where I'm stood right now. Look at all of these guys. I mean, it, this is what I mean by exponential. It's just terrible. There's so many around. You cannot survive if you're not doing enough damage or you haven't got some way of dealing with these uh, but if you are having trouble try that we did play around with that for a little while you can dedicate one person that and there's no chance of them dying whatsoever because they're up on the sides of the room uh, enemies can't get to them and you can still nuke out the burrows uh, but at some point you're going to have to come down you have to be moving around and dealing with the other things um, so also, it, it is just about worth mentioning that aoe healing can actually affect the uh, the things that you're defending Oh yes, yes, so do bear that in mind. If you've been having trouble guys, that's our main uh, advice I think. Try and stack as much power as possible and move as a single unit to, to knock out the burrows before they start to overwhelm you. Good luck, we'll see you next time.